I built this solar station six years ago, and I bought materials for its construction for approximately $11 per square meter of these solar heaters, and it is about 20 or 30 times cheaper than these solar heaters for large solar power plants. We know of more than 100 power plants of this type with a total cost of approximately $40 billion, and for example, the cost of this American power plant is about $2 billion. The purpose of this video is to create similar data on the cost of heat, operating costs and other parameters of this type of solar heater which are located along this west-east line, and therefore they do not need the constant movement of the mirrors from morning to evening according to the movement of the sun across the sky. For example, now we see photos of this spot of solar radiation from absolutely motionless mirrors at these points in time of one day in December. However, the rest of the months have a longer location of the spot inside the receiver, and for example, now I am starting to show the movement of the spot in March, when it is inside the receiver during the whole day, from morning to evening. The end of this video will describe the features of the spot movement in different months in more detail. So, these were my expenses for materials for each section with more than 3 square meters of mirrors, and we can see that almost 50% of the expenses were required for the purchase of steel parts, another 30% were various polymers, and 20% of my expenses were required for the purchase of wooden parts. These materials have been combined into the following 9 parts. And the first part is such mirrors based on a cheap reflective film on a thin sheet of expanded polystyrene. However, we see that my solar heaters are also suitable for mirrors based on a thin sheet of mirror stainless steel and based on anodized aluminum sheet. Here we see part number 2, and it is made of a single wooden board and these steel products, but I think that the wooden board can be replaced by some product of stamped steel sheet. The third part is these two wooden battens with several steel products. Part number 4 are these semi-rigid sheets for placement of the mirrors, and we can see that I chose the expanded polystyrene which are several times cheaper and many times lighter than steel sheets or other variants of semi-rigid sheets. In addition, we see these wooden battens which are cheaper than rectangular steel pipes or stamped steel sheet products. Part number 5 are these wooden stakes, but perhaps we should look for more effective technical solutions based on concrete or steel, similar to these solutions. Here we see the body of my receiver, and the body is part number 6, and it is a sheet of galvanized steel, a layer of rock wool and two wooden battens. This part number 7 is such complex of two wooden battens and several steel products but it may be better if we replace the battens with round or rectangular steel pipes. These steel pipes are part number 8, and it is absorber of the receiver, but it is obvious that pipes on a dark background are not the only possible variant of the absorber, and for example, this is another type of absorber which may be cheaper but has several disadvantages. In addition, now I plan to begin studies this type of absorber and it is several times cheaper than that absorber made of a large number of pipes, but it also has disadvantages. This transparent film is part number 9. So, now I remind you the cost of materials for my solar heaters, but these were the prices in my Ukraine where lumber and steel are cheap, and now I have increased the prices to better correspond to European or American countries. In addition, these were retail prices, and now I am changing them so that the table is based on wholesale prices for large-scale manufacturing, including transportation costs, but we understand that the prices may be different for different countries and that world prices for steel, timber and polymers are constantly changing. We can calculate that the cost of materials is about $10 per square meter of mirrors of the solar heater, but it is obvious that we must take into account other production costs and this is spending my time to make all 9 parts of my solar heater. You can calculate that I was spending about 90 minutes for every square meter of my heater, and below you will find links to my Russian language videos which show in great detail my manufacturing technology and prove that this data is correct. In addition, 
This is the time costs for installation of my solar heaters, and below I posted links to two Russian language videos which show how I built my solar station according to this technology that requires 46 minutes per square meter of the solar heater. Here I wrote my expenses of money and time for one square meter of my heater, but those links to my videos will show you that my technology was very primitive. Therefore we can understand that large-scale manufacturing and research and development can significantly reduce the time costs, and here I wrote my subjective assessment of how much research and development and production automation can reduce the time costs. We can quickly calculate these total construction costs for rich and poor countries, and therefore we can notice that now my solar heater is not interesting for countries with expensive labor but research and development and production automation can drastically reduce its total construction cost. I remind you that I built my solar station 6 years ago, and soon I will post another video that describes the condition of my solar heaters 2 years ago, after 4 years of their operation. In addition, I plan to make another video on the same topic in a year, and we will see all drawbacks and weak points of the design of my solar heaters after 7 years of their operation. Of course, the weakest point is the short lifespan of my mirrors on the basis of reflective film, and therefore I have to do their scheduled replacements every 12 or 18 months. However, these mirrors are very cheap, about $1 per square meter, and their replacement is easy and quick. And now I show how I install my mirrors on several points of polyurethane foam. In addition, now I am testing this new method which changes a mirror in a few tens of seconds. Of course, the lifespan of our mirrors will be longer if the aluminum layer of their reflective film is thicker, or their reflective film has additional polymer layers. In addition, I think that such placement of our mirrors under a transparent film increases their lifespan several times. And now I am testing this hypothesis. I also remind you that such mirrors, based on stainless steel or glass mirror strips, have a long lifespan, about 10 years or more. Another weak point is this transparent film that covers the pipes of the receiver. Now I am showing the film with the age of 10 months, and we understand that it must be replaced with a new one. It was the cheapest polyethylene film that should work during 12 months on the surface of a greenhouse in the Ukrainian climate, but now I am installing a more expensive film for use on Ukrainian greenhouses during 24 months. This is the same film, and we see that it has been in operation without problems for more than 22 months. Obviously, we can buy more durable polyethylene films which are designed for 3 or 5 years of operation on the surface of a greenhouse, but I remind you that replacing such films is a simple and quick action. The next weak point is these wooden stakes which quickly rot at the boundary between soil and air, although we can try to find the right antiseptic impregnation for their timber to increase their lifespan. Unfortunately, Replacing the stakes is a labor-intensive process, but I am currently testing several technical solutions that can make this action easier and cheaper. In addition, I remind you that perhaps it would be better if we could find more effective technical solutions based on concrete or steel. Another weak point of my solar heater is these pipes, and now we see their condition after 4 years of their operation. Here we see traces of water leaks from small holes which appear on the welded bead of the pipes, but fortunately, these holes are clogged with dirt on their own during several weeks after they appear, and therefore a water leak disappears but its rusty trace remains. These are pipes made of cheap steel with a wall thickness of about 2 mm and with low quality welded bead, and I think these pipes will finally die in about a year when their lifespan will reach 5 years and after that I will replace them with new pipes. In addition, these pipes gradually accumulate dirt within themselves, and now I am showing how much dirt has accumulated inside 114 meters of my pipes during two years of their operation. This dirt forms plugs inside the pipes, and therefore I have to clean the pipes every one or two years. Now I will show the first cause of this dirt and those holes with water leaks. And this is a tank with water that circulates through the pipes during the sun and takes away the solar heat. 
And now we see a very thick layer of dirt which has accumulated at the bottom of the tank during four years of its operation. The second cause of the dirt and those water leaks is this check valve, and when the sun disappears and therefore the water pump automatically turns off, the water leaves the pipes and this valve automatically opens the passage for the ambient air which accelerates the corrosion of the steel pipes many times, and this corrosion is the cause of both that dirt and those holes in the welded bead of the pipes. Obviously. We completely avoid the corrosion or reduce the corrosion many times if our heat transfer fluid is not my dirty water but a special oil or antifreeze, or we don't use the check valve and the water is of high quality after deoration. The remaining parts of my solar heater have a long lifespan, but I remind you that they have only been working for 6 years, and it is possible that the coming years will find other weak points that will require an improvement of their lifespan. Our solar heaters will have this position in June when the sun is high above the horizon, but this is their position for the low sun in December. Thus, we must change the position of our mirrors during the year according to the midday height of the sun above the horizon, and now we see how I change the position at my solar station, and we can calculate that I spend about 5 seconds for every 3 square meters of mirrors. The solar heaters of my solar station need this action about once a week. But we can do this action less frequently if this height is greater or this distance is less. In addition, I have to rearrange this device to another stake in the spring, and I have to return it to the original place in the autumn, but my future videos will show how we can get rid of the need to do these actions, and for example, we can change the design of this device, or we can change the position of the stakes or receiver relative to the mirrors. Obviously, if we use mirrors based on stainless steel or glass, we must wash them at least once a year. But we don't wash our mirrors on the basis of reflective film, because they have a short lifespan. Transparent film of my receiver also doesn't need washing, because it faces down and therefore it does not collect dust. Snow is also not a problem because it leaves similar mirrors on its own during several tens of minutes after the sun appears. Tall grass may look like a problem, but it will only reduce our heat production by a few percent per year. This table shows my spending of time and money for maintenance of each of my rows of solar heaters with 29 square meters of mirrors on the basis of reflective film, and this is a similar table, but for one square meter of mirror. We can conclude that these costs will be a problem for large solar stations in rich countries where paying this labor will radically increase the cost of our solar heat. But I described two minutes ago how we can get rid of these costs, and my future videos will describe the possibility of getting rid of these costs. So, we can see that our operating costs have already decreased slightly, but I described a few minutes ago. A variety of ideas on how we can reduce the other operating costs. In addition, it is obvious that production automation, large scale manufacturing, and research and development can significantly reduce these costs to this level, but we understand that this is just my subjective assessment. It is interesting to draw our attention to the fact that most of the operating costs are due to scheduled replacements of my short lived mirrors on the basis of reflective film and therefore we may decide to use not them but such mirrors of stainless steel sheets. These stainless mirrors have a long lifespan, but unfortunately we have to wash them once or several times a year. And therefore we achieve such operating costs in the case of solar heaters with stainless mirrors. In addition, such solar heaters are more expensive. And this is my expenses for materials for the making of similar solar heater with stainless steel mirrors, and this my prototype was described in this video of my first YouTube channel, and its link is below. This table describes some features of that solar heater on the basis of the mirrors of stainless steel sheets. This is the annual heat production from one square meter of the heater, and this is the cost of its heat for different temperatures in the United States, Europe and India, and I calculated the cost of the heat on the basis of this cost of capital and labor. These are the cases when the cost of our solar heat is approximately equal to the cost of heat from natural gas, 
but a decrease in the temperature of our heat significantly increases its annual production, and therefore its cost decreases, and these are the cases when our solar heat is about two times cheaper than heat from natural gas. But I must warn you that these cases require a different design of this device, because it was designed for 50 degrees north latitude, where I live, and it may not be suitable if we want to locate our solar heaters in the tropics or near the equator. This is an example of calculating the cost of our heat, and these targets correspond to these predictions that were shown a few minutes ago. Thus, this is the case for large-scale manufacturing after research and development, and therefore we understand that these targets have not yet been reached today for these my solar heaters which have mirrors based on cheap reflective film, and we can quickly calculate the cost of their heat through similar examples, and I described these real features of my solar station at the beginning of the video. Similar examples lead us to these results. And we see that this cost of our solar heat in rich countries is significantly higher than the cost of heat from natural gas, although our heat in poor countries is inexpensive today. However, the research and development can lead us to these results which were described a few minutes ago, and therefore the cost of our solar heat can decrease to this level. Thus, this is the case of solar heaters with mirrors based on cheap reflective film and we might have noticed that this heat is a little more expensive compared to that case of mirrors based on stainless steel sheets. This is an example of calculating the cost of our heat, and I remind you that this data is the result of this list of operating costs where we see that most of the operating costs are due to scheduled replacements of my mirrors which have a lifespan of only one year. But perhaps the research and development will increase their lifespan for example through the use of more complex reflective films of several polymer, aluminum or anodized layers. Also, it seemed to me that the thicker the aluminum layer of my cheap reflective films, the longer their lifespan. Let's assume that we have increased the lifespan of the mirrors to the level of 3 years, and therefore we have such an example of calculating the cost of our heat, and similar examples lead us to this heat cost. We see that now the cost of heat is slightly less than for that case of mirrors based on stainless steel sheets, and therefore it is possible that this option based on mirrors made of cheap reflective film is more promising. Unfortunately, we also see that my solar heaters are not interesting for generating heat with temperatures greater than 100 degrees Celsius, but we can give them these changes. This type of our solar heaters is cost effective for producing heat up to 300 degrees Celsius, and this is the cost of its heat for different temperatures. These are the cases when our solar heat is slightly cheaper than heat from natural gas, and these cases correspond to very cheap solar heat which is two or three times cheaper than heat from gas or other traditional energy sources. This is an example of calculating the cost of our heat. And you can notice that I have increased these costs of money and time compared to that solar heater based on stainless steel mirrors. I remind you that traditional solar heaters have these parameters which allow us to calculate how much heat they will produce under different conditions. Of course, I measured the energy parameters of these my solar heaters, and these are the results of their experimental measurements for the case of new and clean mirrors based on a reflective film. And these are my theoretical explanations for those experimental results where we can see the main causes that affect the efficiency of our heaters. We understand that this ratio will decrease due to aging of mirrors and dirt on their surfaces, and this ratio will also become less due to the aging of that transparent film of the receiver, the black paint of its pipes and other causes. That is why I downgraded the energy parameters for these calculations, and here we see the energy parameters that were used to calculate the annual heat production. In addition, I measured how much heat my solar station produces, and this is its heat production during one absolutely sunny day per one square meter of new and clean mirrors based on reflective film, but I remind you that aging the mirrors will decrease the heat production. These results are well explained and predicted by traditional calculation methods based on similar tables, but here we should not use full solar insulation, but only direct solar radiation, because diffuse solar radiation is not focused by our mirrors, and we lose it. In addition, 
we add this column which is multiplied by the amount of direct solar radiation, and the meaning of this additional column is as follows. I remind you that the west-east line is here, and now I show how this spot of solar radiation from my absolutely motionless mirrors moves during one day, and the points in time of this day are shown here. We see that the spot is inside the receiver during about 6 hours, although we can understand that this residence time will be greater if we increase this height of the receiver or decrease this distance between the receiver and mirrors. That is why here I wrote that the spot was almost completely inside the receiver, but here the spot gradually left the receiver in the evening, and here it gradually entered the receiver in the morning and you can check that this column at these time intervals absolutely corresponds to this case which has already been shown. However, this is a situation near the summer solstice, but the farther away from the solstice is, the longer residence time of the spot inside the receiver, and now I will show the movement of the spot for another day, near the vernal equinox. Here we can see that the mirrors were immobile, and these shadows show us that the sun is moving. But we see that the spot is located inside the receiver during the whole day, from morning to evening. Besides this, a similar situation of the location of the spot inside the receiver all day will also be near the autumn equinox, in September. However after September, the situation starts to deteriorate, and now I will show the movement of the spot near the winter solstice. Nevertheless after December, the situation starts to improve. And I already showed the situation in March, when the spot is inside the receiver all day long. I remind you of this solar heater project for high temperatures, and let's try to predict its efficiency on the basis of this theoretical explanation of my experimental results, but our new receiver will be made more carefully, and it will have a selective coating. That is why these parameters will be close to the energy parameters of these flat plate solar collectors. But we know that absorbers of this type have a slightly higher zero loss efficiency compared to these absorbers of flat plate solar collectors. This is my forecast for the energy parameters of our new solar heater, and here I used the predictions of the parameters of our new receiver with a selective coating. In addition, these ratios are based on new geometric parameters according to this project. I used these new energy parameters for this forecast of the cost of our solar heat which was shown 4 minutes ago, but here we see that I have significantly worsened the parameters for taking into account dirt on the mirrors and the receiver and their aging. If we need even cheaper heat of these high temperatures, we can try to improve the design of our solar heater, and this sequence of photographs tells us that it would be nice if our heater had a simple and cheap mechanism for small changes in the receiver position in these directions. Recently, I started researching a simple and cheap mechanism we need, and these are springs. Here we see containers for water. And we understand that the more water is in the containers, the lower our receiver will go down. Unfortunately, this type of our symbol and cheap mechanism has several disadvantages, and therefore I am planning to change its design. However, the idea of this mechanism goes beyond the topic of this video, as well as other ideas, for example, the idea of placing some additional mirrors here. Or the idea of using several independent receivers that are located one above the other. Perhaps my future videos will describe experimental studies of these ideas, and above all a solar heater with a similar mechanism which will allow us to produce heat with a temperature of 300 or 400 degrees Celsius and a cost of less than 1 cent per kilowatt hour, thanks to which we will be able to generate very cheap electricity according to the principles of these well-known solar power plants.